guys. I'm Miss Martins. If you win in my previous live, welcome. It's lovely to meet you guys. Please, before we do anything else, I would like you to share this video with friends of yours that are going to grade eight this year. Please share so that we can help as many people as we can, please. So share the video now, share it with your TikTok friends, share it with your friends that you know are on TikTok. Even if your friends aren't going to the same high school as you, they're still your friends. Share, we still wanna help them out. Okay, cool. So before I start, let me know if you were in my previous live. Comment down below if you were in my previous live. I'd like to see who was here before, who's new to the live. Let me know, please. The grade nine live will be tomorrow at half past three. Okay, so this is for grade eight. This is for those of you that are going to high school. I know if you're in inland school, you're starting on Wednesday. If you're a coastal school, you're starting next week, Wednesday. So a little bit of time from now, but this live is to help you guys prepare the best that you can. Hello guys, you're new, awesome. Lovely to meet you, lovely to meet all of you. Who was here last week? Was anyone here last week? Send me likes if you're new. I love meeting new students because remember, if you were here last week, you would have heard me say to, to all of you guys that I am hoping to be your new teacher this year. Obviously not your new teacher. You're going to have an amazing math teacher. I'm very sure of that. But I am here to help you, to guide you, to give you extra info, to give you extra tips. I see most of you are new. That is awesome. Are you guys all in? Who's new? Who's in grade eight? Who's in a different grade? Because guys, this is for grade eight. That doesn't mean you can't stay. Of course you can stay, but this is mostly for grade eights. I want to get you guys prepared, motivated, excited for the school year to come. I know grade eight is a very overwhelming year. So again, please share this with all your friends. Let's help as many people as possible. The share button should be somewhere on the screen. You know, the little share arrow, share it with them. And yeah, if you haven't followed me yet, please follow me because if you haven't seen my profile, if you haven't seen my videos, you won't know that I do amazing tips. Well, I think they're amazing. My students tell me they're amazing. I hope they're amazing. They're to help you guys. They're to help you prepare for school, help you to prepare for studying, study hacks, study tips, how to take notes, how to set up study timetables, when to study, how long to study for, how long to break for, how to make flashcards, how to make, how to prepare for final exams. Okay. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Varsity but two to all grades. Hello, welcome. It's lovely to see people that are also not in grade eight because maybe you guys are just here to say hi to the grade eights, to give the grade eights some encouraging advice and some tips. Guys, First thing that I want to start off with is grade eight is not as scary as everyone makes it out to be. I know you guys are nervous. I know you're nervous. Please comment if you're one of those people that are feeling a bit nervous. It's okay to feel nervous and tell me what you're nervous about mostly. So it can be school related. It can be non-school related. Okay. So while we're waiting for people to join and while you guys are sharing with your friends, remember to share, hit the share button. And while you're following me, if you're new, because I really hope you follow me because that's the only way you're going to get these tips and be motiva mo um, motivated about doing well this year. Please share, follow me, and let's go. So before I start off with maths, I want to know, a lot of you are new. Do any of you have any questions about this in my previous live? So I'm not going to spend more than a few minutes on this, unfortunately. But I do want to help you guys out because I see some of you are new and you didn't, you didn't join my last live. So let me know. You don't know if the teachers teach as good as your old teacher. Okay. That is a valid question. High school teachers are incredible. Most of my learners last year that were in grade eight said, ma'am, the high school teachers are so nice and they actually teach so well. I'm not saying that they're better than primary school teachers, but my grade eights last year were surprised. Okay. Older grades. They don't bother with you. I promise you. I know I made a TikTok about how the grade nines are all like, mm -mm, whatever. They don't actually bother with you. If they're actually really nice to you, you'll see. Either they ignore you, which isn't a bad thing, you know. They might just, you know, ignore you. Not ignore you, but, you know, go on with their lives. Or they'll be helpful to you. You'll be surprised, especially the, the peer leaders, the prefects, 
um, those sorts of people, they're very helpful. If your school makes use of a buddy system, so most, a lot of schools do this, they pair up new grade eight learners with grade 12 learners. So people that have been there before and they know what they're doing, they pair you up with grade eights and then you, and they help you. So don't be stressed. High school mass is, it's not hard if you work every day. If you're the type of person that's scared to work, then I'm sorry, I can't help you because I mean, then it is going to be hard, but no, grade eight is actually very similar to grade seven. So if you are fine with grade seven maths, you will be fine with this maths. Okay, so I'm going to start soon with going over the maths things. So please, 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 can you share this with your friends if you haven't done so yet? And if you haven't followed me in your new year, welcome. I'm very excited to have you as a student. And seriously, I do genuinely care. My students that I actually teach in real life, they tell you that I genuinely care about them. I love them. Okay, so I, I want to help you guys. So follow me so you don't miss out on any tips. Okay, cool. Any last minute about high school, not necessarily math because I'm going to move on to math now. Anything else, please don't forget to share and follow. Are there any new topics to worry about? I'm going to go over that right now. Okay, I'm going to go over the new topics to worry about, which isn't really worry, but things that I want you to look out for. So when your teacher says, we're starting this section, I need you to know, Okay, Miss Martin said that this was a tough section, so I need to focus on this section. Okay, so I will be doing that soon. Afrikaans is hard. Okay, I love your video so much. Thank you. Is long division in first term? Okay, I'm going to get to all of that now. So I'm assuming that all your non math questions are out of the way right now. Let me just address the grade nines. If there are any grade nines here, are there any grade nines here? Comments down below. This is for grade eight. I'm not saying that th those of you that aren't in grade eight need to leave. Obviously not. Please stay. I love chatting with you guys. I love chatting with you guys. And I, I know that maybe you, maybe you're in grade nine, but maybe you struggled with grade eight. So then, I mean, where else? This is the best place to be at the moment. Okay. So see, there's some grade tens. Hello. I am planning on doing a grade 10 one quite soon. Grade nine live will be tomorrow. The official grade nine live will be tomorrow at half past three where i will focus on grade nine specific things okay awesome 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 i know a lot of you guys like the general um q a that we had last time as well so if you're keen for another general q a just send me some likes comment i want to see i mean if people are interested i'll do it again if people aren't interested then you know so comment or like so I know how you're feeling about another Q&A in general across all grades. Awesome. Right. So grade eights, are you ready to find out a little bit about maths and maybe revise a little bit of the uh, things that you need for term one maths? Okay. I know that there are some people asking about matric results, anxiety, and nerves. I will deal with that in another live. It is a very good question. But for now, I need you to try and enjoy the last little bit of your holiday. Don't try and stress about it too much, um, please. So comment down below if you'd like a Q&A on that or anything else. Please let me know what you would like me to do in the next Q&A. It's the only way that I can improve and help you guys. Okay, awesome, guys. So no other questions about grade eight. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let you know what I have planned for this live. It's not a very long one. Because I know that we don't want to sit here for hours focusing on maths, right? We're still on holiday. We want to enjoy the last little bit of holiday. So first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to tell you what you need for the subject, what you need for maths in general. Then I'm going to tell you how I think you should take notes in maths and how you should study and how to practice and how to do well in your exams. Okay, so what you need, how to take notes, how to practice, how to study, how to do well in your exam. All right, then we're going to move on and we're going to talk about basically the most difficult topics in grade eight maths. And the reason I'm telling you this is not to scare you. The reason I'm telling you this is I want you guys to be prepared. So when the teacher starts with these topics in class, you know that you need to go into ultra focus mode and you need to know what's going on. You need to go home every single day and revise. You need to practice. You need to go back to your grade seven books and practice the things relating to these topics. Because if you fall behind in these topics that I'm going to mention, then you are going to struggle. All right. 
Some people are saying grade eight is a huge jump. It's not like grade seven. I think that the jump is more related to the change in environment as opposed to the mass itself. But you guys can tell me what you think as I go on with the lesson. All right, so what do you need for mass? Guys, very simple. I'm gonna go over this very quickly. You need a notebook. So I like to use the typo notebooks. I'm sure a lot of you know what that is. It's the ring bound notebooks. It has the lines in it. It even has slots for you to put in mind maps, summaries, cue cards. It looks like this. This is an example of one. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with these. It's divided into sections. Or you can just buy a normal exercise book like this. I would recommend a book with grid paper because at some point you're going to be doing graphs and grid paper is very helpful for this. Awesome. Then you need a Casio calculator. Obviously, there are other types of calculators that you can use. Who used this calculator in grade seven? Did you use calculators in grade seven, guys? Please comment below. Did you use calculators in grade seven? Okay, because a lot of my grade eights told me last year that they didn't really use calculators and they were told that they may not use calculators in the exam. Were you allowed to use calculators in your final exams? Scientific calculators, guys ones that look like this. It's got exponent buttons. It got square root buttons. It's got pi on it. No. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to use this in a second. That's what you need. You need a scientific calculator. Then you need another book or another file. So you can put your summaries in and you can do practice. So what you're going to do is you're going to have your normal book that you take notes in in class. Then you're going to make summaries and do extra practice in a separate book. Okay. Calculators weren't allowed and nor was it used in final exams. Perfect. Okay. I thought so. So I need to show you guys how to use a scientific calculator. Does anyone still need to buy a scientific calculator? Who has the pink scientific calculator? Like me. Or they also come in other colors that come in gray and stuff. All right, then I recommend study guides. If you guys don't have study guides, it's not the end of the world. I know study guides can be expensive. That's why if you go look in my bio, so later on, remember to click the link in my bio, you will see that I have put a link to free study guides for grade six, seven, eight, nine maths. Also the senior maths. So if there are any senior people in here, if you follow the link in my study guide, you will see study guides as well. Study guides will just help you get extra practice. They'll show you how to work out examples and stuff. Okay, so that's what you need. Now, how do you study for maths? How do you study for maths? So guys, when you take notes in class, you can take notes however you want, but this is how I recommend it. You get a page, you write the heading of the topic. So this is one that I did for grade nine. I'll show you guys a bit later, but it says solving equations, then divide the page into three sections. So yeah, I've got my steps. This note-taking system works well for maths because in maths, you have specific rules that you need to remember especially in grade eights, when you do algebra, there's going to be tons of algebra exponent rules, rules regarding fractions, geometry rules, reasons, things like that, rules, steps, so how to solve the question. So step one, I, get, I group like terms. Step two, I do this. Step three, I do this. So if you want to see me go over a more detailed video of this, Loads of videos on how to take study notes will come in the future. So again, steps, rules, and an example. So when you study, you have an example there for yourself. You have steps on how to do it. You have rules that explain what you need to do for that section. Then that is notes that you can take in class. You can even go home and do them. Then you need to simplify your sections into summaries. So this is an example of an algebra summary. Okay, I have done a video on this on my TikTok before in the past, a little bit of like one or two months ago. I'm going to be doing another video on this if you would like. So if you would like another video, let me know. But basically, you can summarize all of your topics in tables like this or in mind maps like this. So this one's for solving equations. 
This goes over the different types of equations. This is actually a grade nine one, but just to give you an idea. And this one is for geometry or Pythagoras. I don't know if any of you guys have done Pythagoras. Okay, so that's how to study. Then you need to get past papers. Guys, if you click on the link in my bio, so you need to follow me, you need to make sure you're following me first, then click on the link in my bio, you will see links to websites where you can find past papers. You can see what type of maths you'll be doing this year. Scroll through the grade eight past papers, have a look, but don't freak yourself out, please. It's not worth it. We will be going over all the topics, you and your teacher and me on TikTok and in my online workshop. So if you're interested in longer videos that go more into detail, that's not on TikTok Live, you need to go to the link in my bio and sign up for my workshops. They are going to be free for a period of time. So I'm going to be doing trial workshops so you don't have to pay any money. So you click on the link in my bio. Awesome. Now, moving on to the syllabus. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to the service. I'm going to show you what you did in grade seven. I'm going to show you what's coming up in term one now this year. And then I'm going to go over revising a few questions that you might need to know from grade seven. Okay. The first thing that I do want to say is that term one, what was that black blue book with black stuff? Okay. I'm not sure. I haven't heard of it. Sorry. I can't help you with that. But you guys, all you need is your notebook and you can get study guides. Okay, now, grade seven versus grade eight. I know some people say grade eight is a massive jump. In my opinion, grade seven and grade eight, especially in term one, is very similar. A lot of the work that you did in grade seven, you will repeat in grade eight. You'll see the first week or two, you'll say, ma'am or sir, this is, this is really easy. This is, this is what I did. Oh, that book. That's a typo book. Yes. Okay. So you'll say, you'll say it's really easy, but please don't be fooled. It does get more difficult and the pace does pick up. So in grade eight, we move a lot faster. We cover a lot more work and the work does get more difficult. We add algebra in it. So what are the two main topics, the grade nines and tens and all the grades that are in this chat? If you guys are still here, you can tell the grade eights. I'm sure you'll agree with me. The two most difficult topics that people struggle with in grade eight maths is number one, algebra. I'm sure you've heard of algebra. Some of you have even started algebra, which is amazing. And second is geometry. So I know these words might sound familiar to you. You might think I did that in grade seven, like whatever, like I don't care. That's easy. But grade eight algebra and grade eight geometry is more difficult and is a step up from grade seven algebra. So what I'm trying to say, see a lot of you guys that are in the higher grades are saying algebra, you know what I'm talking about. So what I'm saying is when you're in term one and your teacher's going over things that you already know, and when I go over some term one topics now, please don't think, okay, this lady is just telling me nonsense that I don't need to know. This is boring. I already know this. I did this in grade seven. Remember, that it does get more difficult. Yes, geometry and algebra. I'm seeing it in the comments. So if you want to stay up to date with algebra and geometry, remember to follow me. Send me likes if you are going to want more lessons on this or comment, please. I need to know if you guys are interested or not. Awesome. Then, guys, there are things that you learned in grade, you're going to learn in grade eight that maybe you already learned in grade seven, but you learn it in a slightly different way. You need to unfortunately apply the grade eight methods. You can't apply the grade seven methods. So you need to listen to your teacher and do what he or she says. Okay, moving on to actually doing a few revision things. Again, guys, if you know this and if this is easy to you, please be respectful of the people who may not know what's going on or be respectful of me who I'm just trying to revise. I know that this is easy stuff. We're not doing algebra yet because algebra doesn't come in term one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my camera over now so you can see what I'm writing. All right. So while I am switching it, I need you guys to tell me what else are you nervous about for maths? Or are you fine? Or are you fine in general? I'm trying to switch. There we go. Sorry, guys. It's a bit shaky for a few seconds. Geometry. Is that what you're scared of the most? Okay, let me just show you. I hope you can all see what's going on over here. 
I'm scared of the alphabets. Yes, when the alphabet joins maths, things get a little bit more complicated. This is what you did in term one in grade seven. Do these topics look familiar to you? You looked at whole numbers, you looked at properties, you did long division. Can I tell you guys something really, really cool? Can I tell you guys something very, very exciting? You will not do a lot of long division in grade eight, right? You do not do a lot of long division in grade eight. In fact, at the school that I teach, it is not tested in, my, in your test. It might be different in your school. Your teachers might do something slightly different, but I know some of you don't like long division, but it's not, it's not a big thing in grade eight. So these are the things in grade seven. This is what you're going to be doing in term one in grade eight. Okay, so I wrote here at the bottom, please note that your school might teach this in a different order and that's okay. But basically, can you see that a lot of these topics are the same? The things that I would say that are new, in my opinion, would probably be a little bit more about ratios, although you've probably done ratios before and rates, integers, I'm pretty sure that you've, you've touched on it, but it is a little bit more difficult. Common fractions, I mean, that's pretty much what you did in grade seven. And then, yeah, algebraic exponents, algebra. So this is what a lot of you are worried about. However, some schools won't even get to this in grade eight, in term one, sorry, in term one. You might do this in term two. Okay, so let's go over a few things that you hopefully already know. Please stop me if you are completely confused. But here's a few questions for you guys. What are whole numbers? Just send the, send your answers in the comments. What are whole numbers? What are the four operations? And does anyone know what inverse operations are? Tell me, tell me, tell me. This should be grade seven work. What are whole numbers? What are whole numbers? What are the four operations? What is an inverse operation? Does anyone know? Yes, I'm seeing plus, times, and divide. What are those? Okay. Plus, minus, and divide are the four operations. What are inverse operations? Whole numbers don't have decimals. Good. Four operations. Good. Okay, I'm seeing that most people know what's going on here. So let's take a look. This is how we represent whole numbers in grade eight. Whole numbers are represented by the symbol N-O. Okay? You'll also be learning about natural numbers. Does anyone know what the difference is between a whole number and a natural number? Does anyone know the difference between a whole number and a natural number? No. Do you know the difference? Does anyone know the difference? No. So natural numbers start from one. One, two, three, four, and so on. Whole numbers, yes, almost, almost, almost. Whole numbers start from zero. I saw someone almost got it 100% correct. Well done. Almost, almost, almost. So natural numbers start from one. Whole numbers start from zero. The way I remember it, guys, it's actually very easy. Natural numbers start from one. Whole numbers start from zero because the word whole has zero in it. Do you see what I'm saying? The word whole number, whole there, that's a zero. It starts from zero. Okay, four operations. Most of you guys know this. This is plus, minus, times, and divide. Easy stuff. Cool. Next. What is an inverse operation? What is the inverse operation of plus? What is the inverse operation of plus? What does inverse mean, guys? Inverse means basically the opposite operation. Yes, it's minus. So basically, if I say 5 plus 2, I get 7. Plus 2... The opposite of plus two is minus two. If I say seven minus two, I get back to where I started. So it's basically the opposite operation. What's the inverse operation of divide? We said the opposite inver operation of plus is minus. What's the opposite operation of divide? Times. Beautiful. Guys, this is already us doing some grade eight work. Easy stuff, right? Does anyone know what these things mean? Surely you must know this one. What's this? What's bod mass? What does B stand for? Brackets. Brackets. O is of. That's got to do with square roots and stuff like that. D is division. M is multiplication. A is addition. And S is subtraction. Do you guys know this one? Does anyone use this one in school? Ped, PEMDAS or PEDMAS? Does anyone know what that one is? 
Does anyone use this one? I know you taught bod mass. No. Okay, guys, this one is basically the same thing. P means parentheses. It also refers to brackets. So brackets and parentheses mean the same thing. E means exponents. The reason I'm showing you this one is because in grade eight, you're going to be dealing more with exponents. Okay. M is multiplication. D is division. A is addition and S is subtraction. I don't know if you guys knew this, but I'm sorry if you guys are experienced bad connection. If you are, try and log out and log back in. I think my, can everyone let me know if my connection is fine on their end? I hope so. Please let me know. Okay. Right. So I don't know if you guys knew this, but you start with brackets exponents or roots then you do division multiplication addition and subtraction these two can switch places so the acronym could be bomb das and i'm not just making that up it's true bomb das or bod mass you can do multiplication or division first it just depends on which one comes first in the sum if we do the sum from the left to the right if you think your friends at home don't know this, share this video with them. If you are struggling with maths, remember to follow me. I'm going to be doing loads of videos like this. I know this is still easy stuff. Okay, so division and multiplication, I can switch up. Addition and subtraction, I can also switch up. It's just whichever one comes first from the left to the right. Okay, can I speak Afrikaans? I can speak Afrikaans. I wouldn't say I'm the most fluent in Afrikaans. However, I unfortunately do not teach in Afrikaans. I'm so sorry. So division and multiplication, you can swap. Addition and subtraction, you can swap. It just depends on which one comes first as you read it from the left to the right. Okay, next. Can you guys get me the answer for that? I'm going to give you a second. I'm going to give you a second. What is going on? Please explain. Miss Breadstick, um, thank you for... <laughs> okay, Miss Breadstick, you are, were you a bit late to the live? Hello, we are going over some great eight math topics the first things that will be coming up so if every anyone just joined now we're going over some grade eight math topics that are coming up this year we're going over some topics that you did cover in grade seven we're just revising and refreshing the things that you need to know for grade eight so that when you get to school when you start school you feel like your brain has been refreshed and you're ready to go Okay, so I'm asking you guys to use bod mass or bomb das or pem das or whatever to figure this one out. I'm seeing different answers. So remember, what does bod mass or bomb das or pem das say? It says that we need to do parentheses or brackets first. I don't see any brackets. Then it says exponents. I don't see any, expo any exponents. Um, let's carry on. Thank you for saying my nails look pretty. Um, they actually need to be redone. <laughs> okay, so we need to do, let's see, bod mass. Bod mass. There's no brackets. There's no of or exponents or anything. Division and multiplication. These two guys come next before addition and subtraction. So when you look at it like this, this part I need to do first before this. So what is five times three? 15. So we go one plus 15. Then you see it's minus seven plus two, but here is two times eight. I need to do this part first. So I'm basically creating my own mini brackets sort of around the parts that I need to do first. I need to do five times three, it's 15. I need to do two times eight, which is 16, correct? And then I have this over here. So I have 1 plus 15 minus 7 plus 16. Does everyone follow me? So you need to do the 5 times 3 first, you get 15. You need to do the 2 times 8 first, you get 16. Then you go 1 plus 15 minus 7 plus 16. Now we've left with addition and subtraction. But remember, you can do these in any order that you want. So basically what you need to do is you need to start from the left to the right and you need to do it like that. So this doesn't mean that addition must come before subtraction. Just you go from the left to the right and you solve the sum. So 1 plus 15 minus 7 plus 16 gives you 25. Well done to everyone who got that answer. Amazing. Here's another one for you guys and then we're going to move on. Quickly, quickly, quickly. What do we do here? So again, bod mass. There's no brackets. There's no of. There's division 
and there's multiplication. But remember, bod mass, this doesn't necessarily mean that I have to do division first before multiplication. So I don't have to divide those and divide those and, divide, and then times. You just work from left to right. So you go 12 divided by 3, that gives me 4. Then we got 4 times 4 divided by 2 divided by 2. Obviously, you guys can do this all in one step. I'm just trying to do it. I'm just trying to show you the working out for, because in, in case you get it wrong. What's 4 times 4? 16. Divide by 2 divided by 2. What's 16 divided by 2? It's 8 divided by 2. It's 4. Easy peasy. Let's move on. What is the answer to these two questions over here? Unfortunately, some of the grade 8s, when they start, they have no idea what the difference is between these. Okay, so what is the difference? I know I'm going a little bit too fast. I am sorry about that. It is just that I have to go through a certain amount of things. Please let me know if I must stop and go a bit slower. Okay, should I go a bit slower? We'd rather get through things properly than get through as much things as possible here. Okay, ma'am, what's the difference? Okay, there, there is a difference here. There is a difference. Okay, please go back. Okay, I'm sorry, everyone. I'm just going to go back quickly over there. If you want to take a screenshot, you can take a screenshot quickly. Go ahead. All right. Okay, okay. What is the first answer over here? What is zero divided by three? Zero divided by three is zero. If zero is at the top of the fraction, the answer will always be zero. You can try it with anything. Zero divided by a thousand is zero. Zero divided by three million is zero. Okay, what about this side? What happens if I divide by zero? Okay, what happens if I divide by zero? You get undefined. If you do this on your math calculator, let me show you guys. I know you can see my ring light. If I go three divided by zero, what does that say? That says math error. That means that the answer is undefined. It means that it's a non-real number. I cannot do this. So just remember the difference between the two. Zero can be at the top, but zero cannot be at the bottom. You cannot divide by zero. Okay. Please send me likes or comments. If you are learning anything new, this will help me know what to do for next time. Okay. Please remember to follow me as well if you're not following me yet so we can do loads more things like this together in the future. Right. What about rounding off? Did you guys learn rounding off in primary school? You're learning. Yes. I'm so happy. I'm so, so happy, Nikita and Miss Moodley. I'm so happy. Okay. So rounding rules. Do you guys know this? Do you know what? My absolutely amazing grade eights from last year taught me this cute little rhyme. Five or more, raise the score. Four or less, let it rest. Okay? I know you maybe don't know what this means yet, but let's go over an example. If I'm showing you this number over here, okay, this number over here. If you've just joined, we're going over some grade eight things, grade eight math topics. If you're in grade nine, you need to join me tomorrow at half past three. Okay, how do I round off this number to the nearest thousand, to the nearest hundred, and to the nearest 10? Okay, first of all, let's look at this number. We know that this is the unit placeholder. This is the tens. This is the hundreds. This is the thousands. This is the 10,000s. This is the 100,000s. So if I ask you to round this number off to the nearest thousand, what number will we get? So 3, 6, 3, 4, 2, 3, round it off to the nearest thousand. What do we think, guys? Does anyone know? Okay, so... To the nearest thousand, so remember we said this one is the units, this one is the tens, this is the hundreds, this is the thousand. This is the thousand place. So if we want to round it off to the nearest thousand, we need to chop the number off at the thousands. Okay, we need to chop the number off at the thousands. 
right? So we need to chop the number off there because that's the units, that's the tens, that's the hundreds, that's the thousands. If we run, want to round it off to the nearest thousand, then we look at this number. Okay, what was my rule for rounding off? Five or more, raise the score. Four or less, let it rest. So this number here, the one next to the thousands position, is this five or more? No, it's four or less. So if this number is four or less, we, we round down. So we go three, six, three, zero, zero, zero. Okay, yay, I see a lot of you got it correct. Well done. Some of you, the rest of you, you were almost, almost, almost there. Okay, what about to the nearest hundred? Okay, to the nearest hundred, this is the units, this is the tens, this is the hundreds. So we need to chop the number off. Let me rewrite the number for you. So it's three, six, three, four, two, three. This is the units, this is the tens, this is the hundreds. So we run, want to round it off to the nearest hundred. So we chop the number off over here. Okay, we chop the number off over here. We look at this number. Is this five or more? No. So we don't make, we don't increase this. It's four or less, so we bring it down. So it's three, six, three, four hundred. Well done, guys. Is this easy stuff for you? And what about the nearest tens? See, three, six, three, four, two, three. This is the units, this is the tens. So I need to chop the number off here. What would it be to the nearest ten? Three, six, three, four, twenty. Yes. Three, six, three, four, twenty. Okay, so you guys are too smart for me. Let's try something that's more grade eight level because that was grade seven level. What about this? This is grade eight level. A lot of my grade eights from last year did not know how to round off to two decimals. So guys, if you want to take, if you want to take maths all the way up to matric, you need to know how to round off to two decimals. You need to round off to two decimals. So basically, this is my decimal point. That's one decimal place. That's two decimal places. I'm going to chop the number off there. Then we're going to look at this number over here. Okay. Then we say this number here next to the second decimal place. Is it five or more? No. Is it four or less? Yes. So we let it rest. We leave the number as is. So we leave it as three comma one four. If that was a number that was bigger than five, five or more, then the number next to it would have gone up. Okay, what about this one? I hope I'm not going too fast. I'm seeing in the comments that all of you guys are getting this. If I want to round this off to two decimals, that's one decimal, that's two decimals. I chop it off over there. I look at the, the, the guy next to it. I look at the partner over here. This number, is that four or less? No, that is five or more. That's five or more, which means I need to raise the score. That means this one needs to get bigger. So eight comma nine three. If you know how to round off, you're already on a good, good start for grade eight. Moving on. Now we're going to go to factors. Do you guys know how to write? A, first of all, what is a factor? What is a factor? What is, let's start off with what are the factors of 20? What are the factors of 20? What are the factors of 20? Tell me what the factors of 20 are. So a factor, in case you forgot, is a number that can divide into another number without a remainder. So can one go into 20? Yes, it can. Two can go into 20. What else? Four can go into 20. Five can go into 20. 10 can go into 20 and 20 can go into 20. These are the factors of 20. These are the factors of 20. So again, a factor is a number that can divide into another number without a remainder. So one can go in there, two can go in there, four can go in there, five can go in there, 10 and 20. What are the prime factors of 20? You guys need to tell me what are the prime factors of 20? What are the prime factors? So first of all, what is a prime number? A prime number is a number that can only be divided by one and itself. So think about this. One is not a prime number. 
One is not a prime number. Sorry, guys. One is not a prime number. No, it is not. Nope. So let's scratch that one off our list. Is two a prime number? Yes. Because the only numbers that can divide into two is one and itself. Is four a prime number? No. Why? Because one can go into four, two can go into four, and four can go into four. Five is also a prime number. Okay, so two and five are prime factors of 20. Do you guys know how to write, how to write a number as a product of its prime factors? So yeah, I've got it over here. So we just did the factors of 12. We said it was 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. We said the prime factors. No, we did 20, didn't we? Yes, we did. Let's change this number to 20. Let's change it to 20. We did 20. Okay. What are the prime factors of 20? We said 2 and 5. So how do you write a product Write a number as a product of its prime factors. Yes, the ladder method or the, or the tree method. Can I show you guys that there's another way to do it? Let's just do the ladder method or the tree method quickly. And then I'll show you guys the other way to do it. So I'm going to show you the tree method. What you do is you start with your number and you say, what is the smallest prime number that can divide into 20? What is the smallest prime number that can divide into 20? Two. How many times does 2 go into 20? 10 times. Then you start with the smallest prime number again. What is the smallest prime number that can go into 10? 2. How many times does 2 go into 10? 5. Okay. Do you guys see that? Now, is 5 a prime number? Is 5 a prime number? Yes. 5 is a prime number. So I stop there. So what I do is I take these numbers at the bottom of each branch and I write 20 is equal to 2 times 2 times 5. This is writing 20. So this is writing 20 as a product of its prime factors, of its prime factors. I know you, some of you guys have learned this in grade 7. Another way to write this, 20 is equal to, so you see we have 2 times 2 times 5, okay? What is another way of writing 2 times 2? How many 2s do I have? I have 2 2s. So another way of writing this piece over here is 2 to the power of 2 times 5. That's how you do it. Now, one thing that you may not have done in grade 7 is taking your calculator like this. I'm going to show you how to do this easily with using your calculator. So what you do is you go 20. So you take the number, you go 20, you press equals. You press this button up here, which is called shift. You press shift. And then you press this button over here. I don't know if you guys can see what it says. It says fact, because this is going to tell me the prime factors. And look what it does. It tells me 2 to the power of 2 times 5, which is exactly what I figured out using my factor tree or my factor ladder. That is pretty cool. Who knew about this calculator trick or who learned something new today that they didn't know? Did you guys know you could do this? Let's try another one. Let's try another one. So let's do, let's say I'm going to go with, 324, 324, 324. So doing this the long way, the, doing this the long way would mean you have to start with the smallest prime number. You would start with two and you would say, okay, cool. How many times is two going to 324? 162. Then you would start again. Can two go into 162? Yes, it can. Two goes into it. 81 times and then you would start at the bottom again uh, 81 what goes into 81 can 2 go into 81 can 2 go into 81 I don't think so what is the next smallest prime number what is the next smallest prime number I'll do it again in a second for this example 2 can't go into 81 so what's the next smallest prime number that can go into 81 3 yes so 81 
3 goes into 81 27 times. 2 can go into 27, but 3 can go into 27. So 3 goes into 27 9 times. And then 3 goes into 9 how many times? 3 times. So basically what we have there now equals shift fact. I'm going to show you guys how to do this on the calculator. What we have there is 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3. So I will write this. 324 equals 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 4. And look here, if I do it on my calculator, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to do it slowly. If anyone wants to grab their calculator, I would suggest you do it now because I'm going to do it with you guys. Then I'm going to give you one more example and then we're going to stop for today. Okay. So we go 324. Okay. So you type in the number. You go 324. Please remember, if you haven't followed me, to follow me so you don't forget and you don't miss out on future lives and future videos. So 324 equals, okay, so you type in the number, you press equals, then you press this button, shift, and then you press this button over here, this one over there. It's got the dots and the commas on, and you get the answer. Right. Why do you circle three both times at the bottom? Okay, so basically, you circle all the prime numbers in your factor tree, and that's what you put at the bottom. Okay, so let's do one more. Let's do one more. I'm going to get you guys a nice one. Let's do one more. If anyone needs to take a look at this, take a look at it again. If you have any questions about today or what you would like to see in the next live lesson, please let me know. Please comment down below. So while I get the last example ready for you guys, please let me know what you would like to see in the next lesson or what you would still like me to answer before I leave today. Please let me know. Let's do 252. 252. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to try this. Okay? I'm going to give you a few seconds to try this. And then if you want to do the factor ladder, that's also fine. So the factor ladder looks like this. It looks like...